Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, start modeling your character and we're going to start with just the leg. So um, I'm going to start in my front reference uh, or front viewport and um, really uh, not too complicated um, but we're just going to go ahead and get started. So what I'll do is um, in my poly modeling tab, I'm going to go to uh, cylinder. This is the cylinder button. So I've got this cylinder, and one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my attribute editor, and I'm going to go to poly cylinder, and I'm going to go ahead and change this to 8 on subdiv uh, subdivision axes. So in my attribute editor, with this. model selected, go to my attribute editor and then switch to the poly cylinder tab and switch the subdivision axes to 8. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to press, I'm going to just press W on my keyboard and go ahead and uh, move this down here. I tap F to zoom in um, and I'm going to start at the ankle and work my way up. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to turn on uh, under my shading tab. I'm going to go to shading, and I'm going to do wireframe on shaded. And then I'm also going to do. I'm going to click off my object, so now you can actually see the wireframe on it. And then I'm going to do shading, and I'm going to do X-ray. So now I can see the topology on my cylinder, but I can also see the model, see through the model, even though it's not really. Uh, see-through. It's just the viewport. So if I go into my front viewport or my perspective viewport, you'll see uh, it's still a solid object, but um, we're just x-raying through it basically. So I'm going to start by just using my scale and move tool and just get this into the angle and I'm just going to find like a decent place in here. So I've got it here. Um, two things I'm going to do also is I can switch into my front viewport or my perspective viewport, excuse me, and I'm going to hold shift and just click these and delete. I'm going to hold shift and just click those and delete. And I just deleted the uh, top and bottom to the cylinder. We don't need them because we will be making tons of adjustments to the cylinder later. Now I'm going to go ahead and using my edge, holding right click on my obje object and going to edge, I'm going to double click this top uh, edge loop and you'll see it just selects the entire thing. So if I just click off, if I double click this edge loop, you'll see it selects the entire thing. It's much faster than holding shift and selecting each one individually. You could just double click. So now with that being said, I can go ahead and move this into place and I'm going to start to extrude. You can use this button right here. This is the extrude button. You can also hold shift with your move tool on. I, I believe it'll work with any tool, but holding shift, in this case we're using the move tool, holding shift you'll see when I hover over my move tool it says extrude. And then there's also uh, the last way, edit mesh, or mesh, doo -doo 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 -doo. extrude. There's also edit mesh extrude and there's also the keyboard shortcut control E. So there's like f a whole different ways to access the same exact tool. And then also in your modeling toolkit you can toggle that on. Um, it'll also be in here under extrude under components. So tons of ways to extrude. So whichever you prefer. I'm just going to click the button, press W to use my move tool, and then I'm just going to scale up. Now one of the really, really uh, common errors, especially with beginner modelers, um, that um, I see very often is that you'll press the extrude button, let's say, two, three times. Um, and then you'll only move it up once. Um, and then what that does is it creates a whole bunch of edge loops that you can't really see but will affect your model later. Um, so let me show you an example. And I'm just going to sort of scale and move this into place real quick. Um, I'm going to press extrude once. Now I'm going to press it one more time. And I'm going to press W now and move this up. And what you'll notice is I'm just going to pretend like I never saw that, uh, you know, like it was an accident and I didn't realize I did it. I press 
I just pressed G for last tool used too, by the way, um, which is extrude. G is the keyboard shortcut for last tool used. And now what I'm going to do is show you how to fix it. So I'm just going to switch to my perspective view real quick. And I'm going to show you really quickly um, by tapping three on my keyboard, you'll see that I've got that extra loop. Now one, if I press one to bring it into just regular, um, if I press three for smooth, you'll see I have that extra edge loop. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it, select that entire edge loop, I'm going to hold control and then press delete. And what that does when uh, you hold control, it deletes the vertices attached to that edge loop. So if I just press delete, you're going to see this line becomes a little wavy and that's because I didn't delete the edges, uh, the vertices yet. So you could delete them um, later, but I'm just undoing that. You can do it all simultaneously, just selecting this edge loop, holding control and press delete and now I've cleaned that right up. So it is a really common issue. So kind of try to keep, um, be aware that it does happen and just go ahead and start to scale your uh, model accordingly. It doesn't need tons and tons of topology. Like you don't have to follow these uh, your your reference perfectly. It just needs to be pretty close. Um, if the spacing that I have here is a pretty good spacing, so um, try to uh, utilize the spacing that I have. Don't go too. Um, Don't do too many edge loops and extrude too many times. Just kind of as needed. All right, so I'm going to press extrude again. And switch. Oh, that's why. I didn't switch back to one mode. All right. And I'm just going to follow this up the leg. Now, I can do this now or later, but... Um, I'm going to show you really quickly, if you look here, I am not on my reference at all. So um, I'm going to, uh, since I'm showing you right now, um, I'm just going to start to move this back into place and start to scale it accordingly. And I'm just using the handles that I need. I'm not always grabbing this one in the middle. Um, you know, I'm not grabbing this one. I'm, I'm just grabbing the ones that I need. So as long as I follow it from front and side, I will be in pretty good shape. And also turn on shading, wireframe on shaded in your side viewport, and shading x-ray. And now just sort of follow the same path using your reference images. Okay. I'm going to switch back to my front view and I'm going to extrude again. And I'll bring this up here, give or take, all right? And I'll do this one more time. And I'm going to bring this one directly underneath the uh, kneecap. And then I'm going to come up again and start to just follow this out. And I'm going to bring this one to about the center of the kneecap bring this up again and then this one's going to go to just above the kneecap and I'm just pressing G to extrude and scaling as needed And what I'm going to do up here is I'm actually just going to sort of angle this using my rotate tool and just have it do something like so. That's pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to switch back to my side viewport and make all the changes I need here.
and I'm just using my move tool and scale tool and selecting the edge loops that I need to adjust. And this is why it's so important to have your uh, concept art or photographs scaled appropriately and proportionately um, so that this way you get it it becomes much easier to model and there I'll just scale this out and now by doing that that way I knew I was going to be bringing that in too far so these I'm actually going to uh, switch to my vertice vertex mode and I'm just gonna scale uh, move these in to places needed and I'm just gonna follow the line here that I have and notice when I do this I'm clicking and dragging over the verts so I select any corresponding vert behind it okay so that's pretty important to know instead of just clicking one you'll notice you know, it looks weird in these viewports because I'm not selecting both simultaneously. If I run a click and drag on just the verts that I want, I'll select both of them. So, just a good habit to get into. So now that I've got this leg done, um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you uh, one quick way. Um, so, you'll notice it's all got, you know, you can see the really hard polygons here. Um, in order to change that display uh, so it looks smoother, because in this case it is an organic character, um, if it was a robot or something, maybe you want to keep some of those hard edges, but I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. So if I select on the, the mesh itself, and I hold shift and hold right click, and then I go to soften harden edges, and then I go to soften edge, I'm going to click off, and now that uh, really harsh polygons that you saw are now softened, so it gives you a soft display. Um, so that's a really good little tool to use. And if you wanted, let's just say you only wanted one edge, one of these edges to be hardened, you can do that too. You can hold shift, right click with that edge selected and do harden edge. And you'll notice when I click off, you'll see that hard edge right there. So, um, okay. So once I do something like that, um, now that I've got this leg modeled, I want to bring it over to the other side. Um, so, how do I do that? Uh, the way you do that is by clicking on the model, and I'm going to turn my grid on again, display grid, and I'm going to press W, and I'm going to hold D, I'm going to hold D, this allows me to adjust the pivot point, right? Hold D, and then I'm going to hold X. So holding D allows me to change the pivot point. Holding X allows me to snap to the grid. So it's going to snap to each one of these grid points. And I just want to snap it directly to the middle. <clears throat> so I've got it snapped directly to the middle grid point. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so basically X equals zero here, right? That's that's the grid line that I want, the, the thicker, bold grid line. So now that I've got that snap to it, now what I want to do is I want to duplicate it. So in my channel box, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this grid off just so you can see better now. So what I'm going to do now is I want to sort of freeze this information. I need this all to be zeroed out. That's what it's called, frozen transformations. Um, and I know I've showed this before, but um, in 3D modeling one, but here's a little refresher. So we're going to go to um, modify, freeze transformations. And you'll notice that zeroes all of this information out and change the scale XYZ to one. And now that I've got that information like so, I can do edit, duplicate, or control D. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale X on negative one and now we've just mirrored that leg directly over. So that's edit, duplicate. I'll do that one more time, I'll delete this. So edit, duplicate, or control D. 
So I'll just press Control D, Edit Duplicate, and then I'm going to scale it at negative one. And now I've got both of my legs here. Now we can rename this if we want. Um, this will be R leg. This will be L leg. But these names are actually going to change automatically anyway later when we start combining meshes and stuff it'll automatically rename it so um, but just to keep our outliner a little bit clear especially here in the beginning uh, might make it a little bit easier for you to follow along um, and now I've got my uh, model uh, started on the legs so um, that's really all we need to do um, but one final thing I'd like to show you and this becomes a really good habit to do um, as we continue modeling our character is um, deleting all by type history. So once we've deleted all of our stuff, right? Um, what we can do is we can do edit, or uh, you'll notice on this this leg, I have all this information of everything I did, all the extrudes, all the so, uh, soften edges, uh, all the tweaks on the verts, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it keeps all of, and the delete on the edge. So it keeps all of that information inside of the model. And once you, you know, been working on this file for some time, it's that information is actually going to slow down the software. It's going to make this file harder to open. It's going to take longer to open. Um, you may even start to notice crashing or something because it's just too much information stored inside the model. So you have to delete it every once in a while to sort of keep the memory fresh on it, right? Um, so what we're, we're going to do is once you're, you know, happy with your completed project or whatever, um, on the leg at least, what we're going to do is we're going to do an edit, delete all by type history, and you'll notice all that information disappears on both of these. Um, it, it, we deleted all the history information on everything we've done in this uh, file so far, and it really does help. Um, if you forget to do it for a while, you'll notice, you will notice you're going to be like, hey, how come uh, it's running slower? Why did it crash? Or, uh, you know, just things like that. You know, that's just not, it's not working right. Something's wrong. Um, this is the first uh, step I always recommend doing. And you should uh, notice, typically you'll notice a significant difference right away. Um, but if you do it as you continue, as you're working, um, you know, it's always going to, kind of be quick and easy to uh, work with the files. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to throw that out there also. Um, and now uh, this is all I'm looking for the submission. So submit a screenshot of the um, um, front image reference. I mean, you could technically submit you know, I, I want to see the whole actually file like this, um, but I would like, uh, you could submit a screenshot such as this, but definitely submit a screenshot of the front, the side, and um, the perspective viewport, all with wireframe on shaded, so including here. Um, and then make sure you have good topology, make sure your model matches your reference, um, and then make sure you submit uh, three screenshots, one of the front viewport, one of the side viewport. Um, and then one of the perspective viewport. So uh, just so um, we're all on the same page as far as submission guidelines. Um, other than that, make sure that uh, I would recommend edit, delete all by type history. Um, and then also you can always, uh, it's a good idea to save. So control alt S will increment and save. I'm just gonna press continue. And now it's saved as uh, 0003. So anyway, that's uh, modeling the leg. And in uh, the next video, we're going to continue on this character model. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask me. Thanks again.